Little Nog, thanks so much for, for giving us the time. Uh, one thing I, we want to ask right off the hop, uh, clearly you've faced uh, Ryan Bader in the past, but the question I'm curious to know is, have your training methods, uh, how have they changed since your times uh, in Pride Fighting Championships? Training changed a lot. I mean, not only with the, the rules, but, you know, how Pride, uh, there wasn't a cage, so you had to... Really, you could use the ropes to defend the takedowns, and there wasn't as much wrestling involved. So now you really do need a wrestling base. And today, about 80% of the guys have a wrestling base. So that, that all changed a lot in, in our training. Uh, Mr. Noguera, I want to thank you for all of the great fights that you've given us and everything that you've done for fighting. Uh, does it, is it different now that fans of fighting don't appreciate how much hard work and dedication and sacrifice fighters make to put on these great performances for us? I think the fans do appreciate it, but, you know, whenever you have a bad result, whenever you're going to fight, they're very quick to criticize you. So we saw a lot of great fighters that they might have a bad performance or might lose a fight, and, you know, they're, they're really criticized by, by the fans. But I do think they do appreciate it, and, you know, they're, they're a lot of the reason why the sport has grown and why the sport is here. So we also have to appreciate that. A man you know very, very well in Anderson Silva. One of the reasons people admired the, the middleweight great is his seemingly uh, easy ability to tap into that free flow state, to be creative, to be unhinged inside of the cage. Uh, can you get yourself to that state, to that free state when you're competing? Uh, I think that really Anderson fights a, a very psychological uh, mind game fight. I mean, he's very uh, dominant inside of the octagon. He, he controls the cage and he basically breaks his opponents mentally before they're even in there. So that's what great champions do, and that's, I think that's what every uh, fighter strives to, to get to. And uh, Mr. Noguera, uh, can you talk a little bit about how some of the young fighters, the ones that really appreciate tradition, how they treat you? And can you give us a few examples of meeting some young fighters to whom you are their hero? It's hard to mention any names right at the top of my head, but you know, there's a lot of guys that I know that were inspired by my work and, and grew into fighting, watching me, and, and have really used me as a role model. How has fighting changed uh, since the early days that you've been competing in the sport? And uh, when you think of fighting in the future, uh, how, how will it look? I think fighting is a lot more strategic now and, and really more round per round. If you, if you have a first round that's, you know, uh, average and you know you have to go back in there and, and put on a better round. So we're really looking at fighting round per round rather than how it used to be, which was basically looking at the whole fight itself. When you look at uh, Ryan Bader, you have an, an opportunity to do something you couldn't do the first time. Uh, why, will this, uh, why will the result be different in your mind? This time I'm going to be more aggressive in the fight and I'm going to try to hurt him more. And, uh, you know, you're 40 years old now and you won't fight forever. Are you remembering to cherish these moments in the cage uh, because you may not fight that many more times? Yeah, I think each fight means more and more to me as time goes. So I really have to enjoy each camp, each training session to do what I like to do and to be able to go in there and do my best. Rogério, thank you so much for your time. We want to wish you best of luck uh, in Brazil against Ryan Bader, and uh, we'll be rooting for you. And thank you for all of your fights. Okay, welcome.